Welcome back here, WHIP Radio in Philadelphia. Zach Gelb and Mike Zahn here with you. 36 years ago yesterday, the United States beat Finland to win the gold medal in Lake Placid for the 1980 Olympics. And the captain of that team, Mike Arruzzioni, is kind enough to give us a few minutes right now. Mike, I know you're getting ready to hit some golf balls in a little golf tournament, but thanks for a few minutes, and how are you? Not a problem. I'm great. Uh, down in Florida, it's sunny, a little windy, but it's uh, a lot warmer here than it is in Boston. Well, yeah, that's for sure, and we're here in Philadelphia, and it's been vacillating between hot and cold, so uh, we're definitely jealous of that weather in Florida. I have to ask you, though, because a lot of people, they look back at that 1980 team, and everyone remembers the win up against the Soviets and Al Michaels' famous call of, do you believe in miracles? Yes. I'm just curious, after you guys beat the Soviets, you still obviously had one more game to win to beat Finland to win that gold medal. What was Herb Brooks's message to you after you guys beat the Soviets in preparation for the gold medal game? Well, it's kind of interesting because he never said a word to us after we beat the Soviets. He never even said, like, nice game, good win, uh, way, to, way to go. You know, it was just uh, business at hand. And, and I remember us, the practice we had Saturday. We beat the Soviets on Friday. Saturday morning's practice might have been the second hardest practice we had all year. I mean, he skated our butts off. He was yelling and screaming, and I'm like, well, what? what's he so mad for? We just, you know, won a big game. And looking back, I realized what he needed to do was break us down and get all that energy and emotion out of us and have us get ready, to, you know, all day Saturday to get ready to play Sunday against Finland. And he didn't have to get us ready. We couldn't, we couldn't wait to play Finland. Uh, we were excited and anxious about the game. Uh, the Soviet game was over. Uh, this was a new challenge for us, and... A lot of people don't know this. That if we lost our tie against Finland, we could have finished in fourth place. So as big as the Soviet victory was, this this was the biggest game we would ever play. Because if we lose to Finland, well, uh, to be honest with you, you're, you're probably not calling me and talking to me today because we wouldn't have won a, you know, if we didn't win a medal. So, you know, the, the Finnish game was the biggest game we had to play after beating the Soviets. And that's the really amazing part about a great coach is he knows all the right buttons to push. And as a time, at the as a player, you may be thinking, uh, I don't know why coach is doing that. But then you eventually see the rewards with the win, uh, getting that gold medal win up against Finland. What's the valuable thing, though, that coach taught you in life? What was the most valuable thing that he taught you? I, you know, I think a few things. I don't know if there's one actual thing. I mean, obviously, trust, uh, trusting people, trusting your friends, trusting players you play with. And I think respect. Uh, Herb Her was a guy that he didn't care if you liked him. It was important that you respected him. And, you know, throughout the course of the year, there were many times where we didn't like him, but there was never once a time where we did not respect him. So I, I think that the value of respect is something that uh, sticks with me all the time. And now that movie, uh, Miracle, obviously it brings so much more attention to other generations that weren't able to live through 1980, like myself and Mike, who are a little bit younger. But you've been on record before last time we had you on the show saying that that game against the Soviets, because of everything the country was going through, was more than just the game. You scored the game-winning goal in that one. But when that final horn sounds and you guys beat the Soviets, take me back to that day and what was going through your head at that time when you beat the Soviets. Well, obviously excited, um, proud. Uh, realizing that, you know, we we accomplished something that nobody in the world, and, and I mean that, nobody in the world thought we could win. Uh, so I think it was a great feeling of pride. Uh, uh, my teammates and I, uh, you know, worked hard to get to that point, to win that game. And like I said earlier, and you talked about it, we didn't know the country was watching the way they were. It was For us, it was a hockey game and a chance to advance to the gold medal game. But I guess 36 years later, you look back and, and realize how special it was, not only for me and, and from my teammates, um, you know, I, I can't tell you how many times people come up to me and they'll say, I remember where I was when we won. And I look at them and go, we, I didn't know you were on the team. So uh, <laughs> it, it just shows you that it was a moment that was important to a lot of people in, in this country. And, you know, very few times athletes have that opportunity to do that. You know, when, when you know, Denver wins the Super Bowl, Denver people are happy and people in Boston or Philadelphia are not happy. But when it's the Olympic Games, it's a whole nation that feels a part of our athletes. And that's what makes it. I guess uh, putting that USA jersey on so much more special than putting on a city or town or something like that. So uh, that 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 moment and that victory, uh, you know, brought brought a country together and, and made a lot of people feel good. We're talking to USA Olympic gold medalist and Mike Ruzioni and Mike. Earlier this week, Ed Belfour won a gold medal in the 2002 games. 
he gave up his gold medal to help out his son's company. I know previously you've put up some of your things for auction and just to help out charity, but you did keep your gold medal. What was the reason behind keeping your gold medal? Because Ed Belfort is not the first, and what do you think of this practice of giving up the gold medal for some of these players? Well, you know, it, it, to, to each their own. I think you know if you, if you feel it's a, an opportunity for you to get some money for your family, or, or, or in, in Eddie's case, a, a financial business with his son, uh, then that, that's clearly our choice to make. Uh, for me, uh, I sold my jerseys, my stick, my pants, my gloves. I mean, they were sitting in the trunk in my in my attic, and I'm thinking, what am I going to do with this stuff? Uh, but the gold medal uh, and the ring that we got from 1980, uh, you know, will never be sold while I'm alive. Although. We joke about it at home. If I die tomorrow, my 27-year-old son will have it on eBay in a heartbeat. But uh, I, I just felt, to me, the medal is what everything, it, what it stood for. Jerseys are jerseys, sticks are sticks. But the ultimate prize for me was winning that medal. And uh, like I said, I think down the road, at some point, maybe my children will make a decision to sell it. And maybe it, it'll be for the future of kids or benefit them in some way. But, uh, you know, things are good for me financially. I, I don't, you know, I, I sold my my stuff for the right reason, not the wrong reason. I gave it to my kids and I gave some to charity and uh, my kids have some, somewhat uh, used that money in, in good ways already with the houses that bought or the additions on their home and funding their kids' uh, you know, college fund. So I guess every athlete has a choice what they want to do and my choice was to, to keep the medal and keep the ring and, until uh, I'm gone. Now flipping the script a bit to the NHL, if you look around the league, it's not a far-fetched thought to say American players are some of the best in the league. Patrick Kane leads all scorers in points. Looks like he's going to be an easy lock for the Art Ross uh, trophy. Y you look at now some of the rookies, Jack Eichel, Dylan Larkin, here in Philadelphia, Shane Gossesbear. How much do you think your team in 1980 has an effect on how USA hockey has progressed? Well, you know, I get that question a lot. I, I, I think in 1980 we opened the door. Uh, we opened the door to, to uh, I, I felt, a lot of times over the years, having been through the process, that if you weren't a Canadian or played major junior hockey, you couldn't play in the National Hockey League. Uh, so I think after our success in 1980, I think the NHL realized two things. One, the American could play, and two, so could the college hockey player, whether he was Canadian or American. And I think we might, we might have opened the door. Clearly, today's players have knocked the door down. Um, as you mentioned, the guy in Philly, the kid in Detroit, uh, Eichel, who was at Boston University, and Patrick Kane, what he's doing. Uh, there are so many great American players that play the game. We, we, you know, we go into a tournament now. We're a favorite. You know, we're not. You know, oh, maybe the U.S. will be good. We, we expect to medal. We expect to perform at the highest level. And USA Hockey has done a, a great job of, of getting the game to parts of this country that never heard of before. I mean, look at next year's first round draft pick. Uh, unless something crazy happens, Austin Matthews. He's from Phoenix, Arizona. So you know, I, I think the game has grown immensely. Uh, and the talent level today is just absolutely ridiculous. And, and I'll go back. After 1980, you had Pat LaFontaine, you had Chris Chelios, you had Brian Leach, you had Keith Chuck, you had Tony Monkey, Jeremy Roenick. Uh, you know, I can go on and on and, and name these guys that were great players. And now the players have even gone beyond that. So it's great to see. It's great to see not only our men, but our women hockey players and how far that sport has gone. And, and, and even to throw in our sled hockey team, which, uh, I, you know, I, I have so much respect for these kids and what they accomplished. So the sport and hockey in general has just really grown and grown. And uh, the best players now are coming out of this country. And that's great to see. You, you spent some years here in Philadelphia. So let me ask you this with Ghost and his success, uh, the really good defensive player right now for the Flyers as a rookie, uh, just ended a 15 game point streak. Um, what advice would you give to him about playing here? I know it was a little bit of a different level because you didn't play with the Flyers, but what advice would you give to a young hockey player from America? You know, I just think enjoy the opportunity that you have. Have fun. You're blessed. You're fortunate to, to have that God-given ability and hard work that you've done to make yourself a better player. So enjoy the opportunity. Continue to grow. Continue to prosper. Um, and, and make the right choices. And I say the right choices, not just on the ice, but off the ice. And, you don't want to be reading about these guys doing this or doing that. I think it's important that, that our athletes become role models, especially our young hockey players. Uh, so many young kids look up to the players and what they stand for. So, you know, be, be a good teammate, be a good person, be a good friend, and, and just keep growing and enjoy uh, what you have because you never know when it's going to end. Now, going back to one of your teammates on that 1980 team, Ken Morrow, I was fortunate enough to speak to him about two years back, and I asked him a little bit about Herb Brooks, your coach. We, we talked about how, your, or at least you mentioned how, he didn't really say anything to you after the Soviet win, 
But why do you think specifically he had a flair for the big game? Because at the college level, he was very good at University of Minnesota. Couldn't really translate it to the NHL. Why was he so good on the Olympic stage? Well, I think part of it is he, you know, he got to pick his own players. Uh, you know, you're, you're coaching in the National Hockey League. Those aren't players that you recruit, that you, you go after, and, and you put in your lineup. Those are players that you draft, and, and you don't even draft them. The general manager drafts them. So I think in many ways, uh, Wagner was successful, and I think he was successful in the NHL. It's unfortunate that he had to play in the same division as the New York Islanders when he was coaching the Rangers. Uh, but, but I think, you know, when, when you have the opportunity to pick your players, the type of players that you want, fit into your scheme, and the personality of the type of team that you want, uh, you're able to do that at the college level, and it's a lot easier. So, the, you know, the pro hockey end of it, uh, it's a little more difficult because you don't know what you're getting. On the way out here with Mike Ruzioni, the captain of the 1980 Miracle on Ice team, um, that one scene that I saw in the movie, and you're able to now watch it and relive it through YouTube, where you have all your teammates, when you're getting the gold medal, join you on the podium. That just really is the definition of the underdog story and how much you guys place an emphasis on team. When you're getting all that fame and you're on that stage and you call all your teammates up, just how important was that to you that you were able to fit the whole team on that podium? <laughs> well, you know, they said we wouldn't fit, and we did. I don't know if we fit now. Uh, but, you know, to me, it, it was all about a team. It wasn't one person. One person shouldn't be on the podium representing the team. Uh, and, and that has changed. If you notice now, the Olympic Games, when they give medals out, it's a platform, and all 20 players at 25 or 26, whatever they have in their lineup now, all stand at the same time. So, uh, like I said, the, the Olympic Games wasn't Michael Ruzioni. It was 1980 hockey team. And um, like I said, we, we, we all fit there, and, uh, and, and they changed the program because of us, and that's a good thing. And, Mike, I know you got to run and hit some golf balls, but uh, real quickly before we let you run, uh, last time we had you on the show, you did ruin that moment for me in the movie when you told me the scene didn't really happen when you go, <laughs> Mike Garuzioni, who do you play for? The United yeah. States of America. You just said, uh, yeah, that never really happened, but the practice did happen. So how did that practice actually end? Because I didn't ask you that last time. Well, what happened was well, only 16 of us skated that night, not, not all 26 guys. Some, some guys didn't dress that night, so we only dressed 16. And we did the drills for about an hour and 15, hour and 20 minutes. And the guys throughout the drills were smashing their stick against the boards or against the glass. And uh, if I remember correctly, Mark Johnson smashed his stick against the glass. And Herb said, if I hear another stick break against the glass, you'll skate till you die. Oh, my God. Well, that's how it ended. <laughs> <laughs> Well, <laughs> you know what? I, I, I can see now why why Hollywood went out there and they decided to make it a more of a, a Hollywood kind of story than having that kind of ending. Right. <laughs> All right, Mike. Thanks so much. Hit him straight today on the golf course. We appreciate a few minutes. It's a whole lot of fun. All right, guys. Thanks for having me on. Thanks so much. There's Mike Ruzioni joining us on the hotline, WHIP Radio in Philadelphia. That was awesome to be able to talk to him. And uh, I'm telling you, that's my favorite scene maybe in a movie of all time. When he's sitting there and you just have Herb Brooks with the whistle going, again, I can't whistle, but again, Understood. again, again, again. And then he just goes, I had a breath. It's so Hollywood. Mike Garuzioni, who do you play for? The United States of America. And then the whole team just like drops and they get on out there and the lights did actually go out. Uh, I remember Mike told us that story last time. So uh, some great perspective for him as we celebrate what was yesterday, the 36th anniversary, a uh, year anniversary of that team winning gold.